Good morning, folks. Our articles today will touch on solar climate forcing and the ongoing geomagnetic changes of our planet. But we are going to start, as always, with our star. And the last 24 hours on the sun were quiet. We've seen the Earth-facing solar quiet continue to dominate as the Earth-facing sunspots have been exceptionally calm. One eruption occurred, but it was at the limb where lately the active regions have gotten their energy out before sneaking across the Earth-facing half. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are also quiet, so we're going to head to the articles where we begin with the solar flare effect on the planet from a thermospheric perspective. Detailed work on how the heat transfers from flares into the ionosphere and then subsequently heats the neutral atmosphere. This one looks at modern flares in the observable data, but for more on how bigger flares have a remarkable multi-degree short-term spike effect on Earth's temperature, we recommend this one out of Harvard from a few years ago. Big flares can change Earth's temperature instantly by several times the amount of so-called global warming over the last 200 years. Up next, we have one on how the ionospheric disruption from solar wind reaches down to the equator. This is something we've seen more and more recently, recognition and understanding of the global impact of space weather amplification with the penetrating electric fields that send that energy from the polar cusps and aurora equatorward in traveling waves. Lastly, on the article front, not a bad modeling job of ionospheric ionization during a geomagnetic event, not unlike the one we're in now. The struggle with this model is that it kind of ignores major solar events and focuses on ambient ionization upticks at the ground level, which only reach about 25% in their model. By the way, that is still relevant for the biosphere, but the better portion of the model looks at a 600% increase in the upper atmosphere. This is where the major ozone destruction comes into play, which will have an even greater impact through UV penetration. That was the primary actor identified, by the way, in the top paper from 2019 on how geomagnetic events like our current situation end up causing major extinctions of species. And that upper level ionization is also going to wildly affect the global electric circuit, leading to more extreme storms, wind, lightning, and temperature swings, which of course we're already seeing only 25% of the way into this modern cycle on the march downward. If you missed it yesterday, our October event is set for the 14th. It's not a meet and greet like the last several events. We were invited to give a presentation on the current situation at a winery in southern Arizona. It'll be a bit more formal of an affair in October. No on-site registration either, folks. Only 50 tickets available, and the link is in the description box below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. Remember, the 20% off everything, including our books on the ongoing Earth Cycle event, only lasts four more days. That Shopify link is also below the video in the description box. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.